Edinburgh, capital of Scotland, stands on volcanic rock. Here, archaeologists found evidence of fortifications first built in the Bronze Age, around 850 BC. By the mid-19th century, the city was a key centre of the Enlightenment, filled with high achievers in politics, finance, science and industry. This was a city of ideas and achievement, and breweries, 41 of them. It was also home to one George Lorimer, a man who appreciated the finer things in life like golf and drinking. Lorimer inherited his father's estate in 1868 and founded the Caledonian Brewery the following year. He knew that you don't get brilliant beer without the right people and brought in Robert Clark, one of Edinburgh's top brewers, to help. Together, Lorimer and Clark established a brewery that has outlasted all the other breweries in the city. The brew house was built on Slateford Road, within the so-called charm circle of springs and wells of the city centre. These had been the reason for the great growth in the brewing sector here. The Caledonian's red brick buildings were strikingly different in a city made of stone, and the beer brewed within them was equally distinctive. The team at the Caledonian took their work seriously. These men knew everything there was to know about malt and mashing, hops and heat, finings and fermenting. No matter what technology did to make brewing more efficient, it would always be people who made the difference. Today, the Caledonian Brewery operates in the same time-honoured traditions of craftsmanship and attention to detail. Our beers are made by people who care as much as their predecessors did over 140 years ago. Now that's something worth drinking to. Your pint starts life with the milling of the grain. The malt is grist, which is crushed in the, in the mill, and it's transferred through here. It has a certain mix and a certain temperature. A firm hand is needed from time to time when the malted barley and grain are fed into the tons. We need to use a rubber mallet to bang the sides to make sure it doesn't bridge. Because if it bridges, we get wrong consistency, and then the mash is ruined. Steam won't scorch the grains as it heats them to the point where the enzymes turn to sugars. It lies in there for an hour and then what happens is we put the sparge on at 72 centigrade and it goes round, open the valves and what we're doing is replacing the water is getting drawn out. The fresh water and malt sugars are called wort. What we're looking for is a lovely clear wort. If the, the wort's not clear,